Hey everybody and welcome back to Critical Crafting. This is Dylan, your Crafting DM here. I was at Gen Con a little while ago and I met some amazing artists and crafters that were doing some really cool things that I had never seen before and never really thought about doing. And a lot of them had some advice for things that helped me improve my own craft. So I thought I'd share with you some of the things they had to say and the tips and tricks to make some better crafts. One of the really cool things about Gen Con is that you run into some people in all kinds of random places. And I went there with the idea that I was going to interview some big names. I was going to talk to Dwarven Forge, um, you know, I was going to talk to all these people. And it was just so crazy and busy and crowded. And I started talking with some other people and I was like, they have some really cool stuff going on. They have some really cool stories. So these are the people that I wanted to share. Um, the first person I talked with was Duff or the impending Duff. And he was just painting in the middle of a room, essentially, uh, a hallway as people were walking by. He's just sitting there painting. And I started watching him. I was like, whoa, I got to talk to this guy. Everybody calls me Duff. I'm known as Impending Duff. On uh, Twitch is my main platform. I stream three days a week. I'm also, I have a Patreon, Twitter, Instagram. I'm all over the place, obviously. This is my full time. So, yeah, I also do these conventions. I teach at conventions and uh, a convention a month and teaching one on ones via Skype, etc. I do full time commissions. I'll get an email that will hit me up on Discord. Hey, Duff, I've got a squad of uh, plate marines I want you to do. Okay, then we discuss. I have three different tiers it's tabletop, like this guy, he's just painted well, but not to a super high standard. He looks really good on the table. Tabletop Plus, where it takes that quality and gives it a little extra detail, gives it a little pop, there's highlighting, shadows, etc. And then there's something like a character detail, where if you put them down on the table and your friends are like, that looks good. Man. I literally take every piece and assess it. I'm pretty familiar with most models, so if they they get a hold of me and ask for me to do a Tiamat Dragon, you know, I know what I'm getting into. Make sure I take into consideration the details. That, that's the biggest thing. I don't price on time because I'm kind of OCD. It's my good side. I'm a perfectionist, so it slows me down a bit. I might as well take it to somewhere I'm at. I know I'm going to be proud of what I, I crank out, so I don't charge by the hour. I, I look at it as how much detail it has. I am uh, partnered with Creature Caster, Monument Games. Um, they do some different larger scale sculpts. It, it's just absolute detail galore. Some of the most beautiful models I've ever seen. I'm not just saying that because I'm partnered with them. I've been a big fan of theirs for the past two years. I started painting when I was 14 um, by accident. I was building model airplanes and such. I stumbled into a store at the mall and I saw this package of like futuristic blue guys. Like those are cool, it comes with paints, it comes with a brush, I'm gonna check it out. So I bought it, I took it home, painted them up. So it begins. I showed the guy working at the store, he's like, are you gonna play the game? I'm like, game? What game? Let's go. I, I fell headfirst into the hobby. I found the Warhammer booth, the Games Workshop booth, and I, I was just like, oh. This group of models here, the Death Guard, I'm very much a, a metal fan, death metal specifically. I rolled up to the booth and I saw the new Death Guard, and I was just like, if that's not a death metal band in 40K universe, I don't know what it is, take my money. My go-to's are almost exclusively the Monument Pro Acryl line. That's a uh, creature caster again. Um, these paints are just gold. It does everything you want it to do. It blends like a dream. I, 
I would bathe in this stuff if it wasn't <laughs> so expensive. But I used to use Scale 75's line of paint. I still do, but what works for me might not work for you. you know, I'm not a fan of Vallejo paints. They're a great paint line, but they just don't work for me. I've used Citadel. There's nothing wrong with them. I actually don't mind the, the pots. Um, I know everybody can't stand those flip top pots. Clean the rim and make it. it's not that big of a deal. If a client wants specifically Fenris in gray, sure, okay, I've got them to use them. When you're talking the G-Dub line, I'm using more of their technical paints. The dry specifically, uh, if I dry brush, I'm using a dry from G-Dub. I, I love that consistency. I don't like thin paints for dry brushing, so. Um, I also use their washes. I've decanted all of mine into droppers. I know, hypocrite. It's much easier to airbrush with a dropper bottle. Well, at home I've got studio lighting, but something like this light here on Amazon, it, it's got three different temperatures. And if you're really worried about shadow, you get two of them and kind of have them like this. There's nothing wrong with hobby store brushes. Go to Hobby Lobby and get yourself a cheap little $2 synthetic. My advice to anybody who wants to do this a little more seriously is to get a Kalinsky Sable brush. I'm a brush snob. I do like a high-end Kalinsky Sable brush. This is a monument uh, long way. This is also a Kalinsky Sable. This is my go-to brush, a size two. Uh, just because we're painting miniatures doesn't mean we have to use miniature brush. Use the biggest brush you possibly can. With a really sharp point, you can paint eyes with a size three, no problem. I pretty much only use my um, synthetics for metallics because the metallic mica flakes in the paint will actually thrash the natural bristles of a, a sable brush. There are products out there, the G-Dub paint cup. Um, when you're rinsing your brush, do not rake the bristles across any textures. Just suspend it in the water and, and rash it back and forth. That should be more than enough. Things like the Citadel water cup that have those like ridges on the bottom, mm -hmm. that'll destroy your brush. Rip the hairs right out. Don't leave paint in the brush. The other thing is when you're storing your brushes, never store them directly up and down like this. You want to store them so that the bristles are painted down. So I always store my brush with the, the guard on it and upside down. That lets all the moisture that you've just cleaned your brush wick down instead of into the ferrule, splaying those bristles out. Just the key is to get a good quality brush soap. This is Gentastic Brush Goop, and it's an all-natural brush. Uh, so I've taken brushes that are 20 years old and gone and saved them with this stuff, no joke. Made in the USA. It's all natural. You can see the glycerin in it. A wonderful artist on Instagram by the name of Super Sarah. Jen, who makes the soap, told Sarah, go home, put the masters in your hair. Take the other side, put the gentastic in your hair. Tell me what your hair looks like. The master side was ratty and dry and, and brittle. The gen side was silky and smooth. Conditioner makes the hair silky and smooth. I had a student here yesterday. I was doing a one-on-one, -on -one and I'm painting, and he's doing the same thing. This, this is the first miniature he's ever painted. While he's painting, I kind of stepped aside and was working on another piece, and I said, oh, crap, and he, he just stopped what he was doing. He's like, you have no idea how reassuring it is to hear you say, oh, crap. I'm, like, I'm human too, dude. Just be patient and understand that you gotta learn how to walk before you can run. It's your hobby, so. Don't listen to John at the hobby shop when he says, oh, you're painting Space Wolves, you have to have it this color. It's your hobby. It, it doesn't matter. This is a game and we're painting little plastic army men and it's supposed to be fun. So don't let somebody tell you that what you're doing is, is wrong. Make yourself happy. Don't worry about impressing other people. Your friends going, oh, dude. That'll come eventually as long as you stop, stop caring about it so much. The next person that I talked to was Brittany from Battle Babe Painting, and the reason that her work really caught my eye was because 
there was these crazy like black light lit up dinosaurs and it was all set up in the middle of like where everyone else was gaming it was just kind of there and i happened to stumble upon it because i was kind of exploring through the whole con and the person that was behind the booth was like hey do you want to talk to the artist and i said heck yes i want to talk to the artist i want to know how they did this this is amazing my name is Brady, and i am coordinator for Cincinnati Arsenal Gaming. We just want you to come play and we're going to help you learn everything you need to know to grow in the hobby with us because we want more people to play with us. You can be brand new at the game with great plastic models and we're going to find you a home. I have a painting company for commission painting called Battle Bay Painting. I also do uh, wood and foam building. We did a 20 foot space hole. We cut it down. It didn't fit the doors. 10 feet tall. I have a full-time normal job. I do billing. No. Um, so the painting is really my only creative outlet anymore. Um, but I always loved painting and art as a kid. I just never could paint on a canvas. It took me till my mid-20s to find something art-related that I was actually pretty good at. Blacklight is called Fast Color. And it's actually a model car paint. It's a semi-translucent uh, fluorescent paint that I used after I was done painting the models. Um, and I took the yellow and the orange all the way up to the finished product. And then there's a orange translucent that I use just to coat on top of that. I really like the hobby side of it. I like to build and paint the models. I love playing them. But I probably spend more time painting than I do play. I do a lot of Games Workshop. Um, if it's not Games Workshop, they can shoot me a picture. So they just want some color on it and a little bit of detail so that they can put it on a D&D table. That tends to be a lot less than, I want to showcase this and it be the focal point of, say, this collection of models. That tends to be more, or the bigger the model tends to be more expensive. I do bulk armies a lot as well, so when I get like a hundred models, I'll do like a bulk deal. So you know, you give me all of them at once so that I can do a big assembly line on them. I'll drop the price a little bit for people because I know that when you get up to those numbers, it becomes overwhelming to get them painted. And you're looking at this sea of plastic going, what do I do with this? Tabletop. I think it was about five. Let me be real honest. I think it was about five, four okay. seventy-five, five. I paint primarily with actually Citadel paints by Games Workshop. Citadel is really the for me. I found the best because they have a painting app, um, and they'll tell you, hey, start with this dark green, and then wash it with this shade, and then layer on this lighter green and then dry brush it with this really soft pale green and that'll get you this product. It's got pictures along the way. And if you're a Warhammer player, you can go in, pick the model that you're painting and it'll tell you here's the green, gold, red, and blue and you just tap on the green and it'll tell you how to get that green. So for beginner painters, for them to be able to have access to that information without anyone there to walk them through it, it's really beneficial. I use is called Paint Me Gone. Um, it's a plant enzyme reaction, so it's not a chemical reaction. So it doesn't eat through your model. It, what it does is it breaks the bonds within the paint and the pigment. Instead of trying to scrub off all of this paint, you just it just sloughs off. Uh, watch a lot of YouTube. YouTube. YouTube painters. All of the YouTube, as far as beginning, Duncan Rose Games Workshop, he's really good. I know a couple of commission painters who will just sit and paint straight through an entire army. They're talking you through what they're doing at the same time. If you're a, a more advanced like brush painter and you haven't tried airbrushing, that's where I would say you should try next because the blending ability in airbrush is amazing. The speed, because it saves so much time when you're batch painting. The last group I talked to is actually a team called Team Bad Decisions. And the reason that they kind of caught my eye was because I saw this like barrel thing and I looked at it and I was like, oh my gosh, like people have put terrain inside of this. And 
they were using it as a display case. And it kind of made me wonder about, I wonder if I could make like functional things where I store my minis, like, I don't know, a, a coffee table or end table or something. And like inside of it is my terrain and minis and stuff. And you can like pull the drawer out and there's all this like lava thing going on. You could play at it. Like, I don't know. I just thought it was really cool. Well, we're Team Mad Decisions. I'm Nick. Marcus. I, I do the displays, he does the models. We started off as kind of a four guys, so we wanted to have fun, and we go to Adepticon mostly to do the team tournament. As his models got bigger, so the displays. We used like a flat display that was only like six feet wide, and it wasn't enough. So then, then <laughs> we've gotten to the point where we needed to bring trailers. Next year, the one that we're really known for is the corn display. This right here is actually the top of it. I just wanted to take it to tournaments because it's been sitting in my basement forever. We had an idea. I threw it out as a stupid idea. As uh, when we put 80,888 skulls in there and my other friend's like, that's really dumb but really smart. And we worked with a secret weapon on these. Um, <laughs> it was really pretty cool. People loved it. Still wasn't big enough. And so the next year we did a seven foot sarcophagus. I think it was a little longer than that. That was my favorite display in Army. It looked fantastic. And we put a clouds and he made these amazing hell breaks flying through them. And it was like a lightning effect coming through the like clouds. like a storm up oh, the clouds. So that so is awesome. So that's kind of our trademark. That's how I got brought on the team. We wanted a display and a carrying case all in one. So it was actually an ammo crate. They just took the lid off and it had two drawers that held all the books and dice and everything. But what we learned from that was the reveal. People love the reveal. Yeah, sure. we bring it in the night before and it's like, oh my god, what bad decisions did this year? We did um, a six foot board and it was six foot deep. The tray pulled out. Like yeah. where you'd lay a dead body and you unfold the body bag and the nerve displays inside the body. Bag. So the footprint of that ended up being 12 feet. Experiment with stuff and don't ever think that you can't do anything just because so, someone else did. Don't be afraid yeah. to fail. Even I've screwed this end together four times because as soon as I got the, the long piece on there, I was like, no, throw it away. We'll do it again. When they see stuff like this, people feel like they can't do it. And it's really not hard. It's patient. Sometimes you have a plan and sometimes you're just like, well, I got all this stuff, let's see what I can do with it. I think that's what most people are afraid to do is like, if they fail, they're like, well, I failed. You just got to be one to go, nope, I don't like it, tear it apart and do it again. If I don't like it, I'll just throw it away and start over. We usually do that every day. Nope, scrap it all, start over. <laughs> I, I like to make people forget that you're looking at wood or foam or so so a lot of that part is covering the ends of your foam, covering the ends of your wood. The garage was taken over, the dining room table, the bar in the kitchen, the living room was taken over. Every flat surface was covered with something. Like we were eating off a of paper plate at the couch. So my wife is amazing, so <laughs> I'm really shocked you still Please add that in there. Less and more about the wind, but more about the conversation. When we walk into the room, we get high fives, how you doing? We want to joke with us, we have a lot of great stories, and that's what we live for. Winning's fun, but it's not what we do. So those are some of the people that I had the opportunity to talk with at Gen Con. I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do like and subscribe if you haven't already. And we'll see you next time on Critical Crafting.